أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وحبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الهداة المهديين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى يوم الدين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Whenever we hear of a disaster or a war or turmoil in certain parts of the world or difficulties that the people of the world, the people of the world face as a whole, many people begin to associate that with the reappearance of the Imam of our time. Because when we go back to our hadith, we see that the Imams mention many signs of reappearance and they tell us that if such and such incident, if such and such thing happens, then that means that this is a sign of the reappearance of the Imam. And you find that this area, this topic has lots of interest. People are very interested about this topic and it's also a very controversial topic because many people are always trying to apply the current affairs and events of their time, they're trying to apply the ahadith to the, to the things that happen in their time. Now even though this is a good thing, the fact that we are concerned about the signs of reappearance, because first of all it shows that we are thinking about Imam al-Mahdi, and the second thing is, if I believe that the reappearance will be close, I will prepare myself in a better way for the reappearance of the Imam. So even though it's a good thing, but unfortunately, there is an imbalance in that you find that out of all the topics of Imam al-Mahdi that concern Imam al-Mahdi, many people are mostly concerned about the signs of reappearance. And most of the concentration is placed on this topic and the other topics, the other more important topics are neglected. Like the topics we spoke about. For example, how do I prepare for Imam al-Mahdi? How do I try and become amongst the 313 companions of the Imam? Or what are my duties in the Zaman al-Ghaybah, in the occultation of the Imam that we spoke about last night? And for example, how can I enhance my relationship with Imam al-Mahdi? And how can I make sure that Imam al-Mahdi is satisfied with me? These, these topics are, which are more important we find are neglected by most people. And the signs of the reappearance, most of the concentration is placed on that. But nonetheless, this is a very important topic. Because the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, in numerous ahadith, they have spoke about the signs of reappearance. Certain things will happen, and they will serve as signs to the reappearance of the Imam. And that's why tonight and in the next majlis, we will go over the signs of the reappearance in the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt. And we will go over four points. Point number one, what are the different types of the signs of reappearance according to the ahadith? Point number two, can bada happen in the signs of reappearance? Meaning can Allah all of a sudden change His plan and erase all these signs and all of a sudden Imam al-Mahdi may appear without any of the signs happening or no? This is number two. Number three, the third point about the signs of the reappearance is that why is it that we have to be extra careful before we apply the ahadith to the events that we see in our life? And number four, what is the chronological order of the signs of the reappearance according to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt? So inshallah we will look and examine this topic according to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt. So we begin with the first point. What are the different types of the signs of reappearance? When we go back to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, we can divide the signs of the reappearance into four types. Four types of signs that signal the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi. The first type are the natural signs, the signs of nature that will happen in the sky. For example, we have a hadith that, say, that states amongst the signs of the reappearance of the Imam is that during one month we will notice 
a solar eclipse that will happen during the middle of the month and a lunar eclipse that will happen towards the end of the same month. And the Imam says that such an event, such a phenomenon has never and will never happen in history but for this once. During one month, a solar eclipse in the, in the middle and a lunar eclipse towards the end. This is one example. Another example, the ahadith tell us that as a sign of the reappearance of the Imam, many parts of the world, they will notice very heavy rain. Rain like they have never witnessed before. This is one sign. Another example is that you may have all heard before is that amongst the natural signs of the reappearance of the Imam is that the sun will one day rise from the west instead of the east. We know the sun every day since the beginning of time it has been rising from the east and it sets in the west. All of a sudden one day the sun will rise from the west and sets in the east. And the ahadith tell us that the purpose of these natural signs is to capture the attention of the people, to show them that, look, something great will happen. Now this is something huge. If the sun, all of a sudden, one day, it rises from the west, right? Why? Allah wants to tell them that this is a huge sign for a huge event. Something huge will happen. And that is the what? The reappearance of the imam. So this is the first type of signs of reappearance. The second type of the signs of reappearance the hadith tell us is that the period preceding the appearance of the Imam will be a period of much difficulties and destruction throughout the world. And in one hadith, the Imam, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he applies one verse in the Quran to the period preceding the reappearance of the Imam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Holy Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ The Imam, he said, this will happen before the reappearance of the Imam. Allah says in the Holy Quran that a time will come in which fear will be spread across the world. The Imam says this is what will happen before the Imam comes. The world will be filled with fear. The world will be filled with hunger. Many parts of the world, you'll see that they will what? They will be spread with hunger. The Imam says it will be a time of what? A time of in which people lose their wealth. For example, the Imam says an economic recession will what? Will spread across the world. The Imam says inflation, you'll find inflation throughout the world. And the Imam says th difficulties such as severe pol political crisis in many parts of the world. And the last thing is that you will find destruction and death everywhere. Many people will die that some ahadith indicate that out of every seven people, five people will die. So more, almost two-thirds, or maybe that's more than two-thirds of the world. And in another hadith, the Imam says two-thirds. He says two-thirds of the world will be wiped out because of the wars and the killings and the violence and because of the disease that will spread and kill the people. So this is the second type. Many ahadith that speak about the destruction and the difficulties preceding the appearance of the Imam. The third type of signs of reappearance are the ahadith that speak about the spread of corruption and immorality. The ahadith tell us that the time preceding the appearance of the imam will be a time in which immorality and corruption will spread in a way human beings had never seen before. Immorality will conquer the world. Everywhere you go you will see immorality and corruption and the human beings will lose their moral system. For example, one hadith of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says, he speaks about the time before the Imam, the signs of the reappearance. He says, وَرَأَيْتَ طَالِبَ الْحَلَالِ يُذَمُّ وَيُعَيَّرْ وَطَالِبَ الْحَرَامِ يُمْدَحْ وَيُعَظَّمْ He says, you will see the moral system of human beings will be completely the other way around. Good in their eyes will be bad, and bad in their eyes will be good. One of the examples of that, he says, if anyone wants to make halal money, or he wants to do anything halal, people will begin to, uh, to scold him, rebuke him, mock him. Why do you go and, and, and try to what? And make your rizq from halal only. No, come through haram. If you try to be a person who follows the rules of Allah and only halal, you'll be looked down upon. People will say this person is backwards, he's uncivilized, he's not for this age. 
But then at the same time, وَطَالِبُ الْحَرَامِ يُمْدَحْ وَيُعَظَّمْ The people that go after the haram, these will be the noble people. These will be the important people that people what? That people praise. For example, if you're in this age, if you're a singer, for example, or if you're someone that drinks, for example, or does any of these other harams, you're seen as a good person. But if you say that I don't like these stuff and I want to stay away from these stuff, you'll be looked at as a backwards person, that you do not fit into our society. So the moral system of human beings will be completely the other way around. And you can see this has begun in our days today. And that's why there's a famous hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he speaks about this. He told his companions one day, كَيْفَ بِكُمْ إِذَا فَسَدَ شَبَابُكُمْ وَفَسَقَتْ نِسَاءُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَا تَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُكَرِ He says a day will come, he tells his companions, in which the women and the young ones will become, will, will become corrupt and you the men, you will not enjoin the good nor will you forbid the evil, you just watch. And if not, you'll also be like them. And then they told him, the Sahaba of Rasulullah told him, Will that time really come? He told them, min dalik. He told them, Kayfa bikum? Ida lam, ida bil munkar wa anil ma'roof. Not only will you not enjoin the good and not forbid the evil, but you will do the opposite. You will forbid the good and you will enjoin the evil. You will encourage the evil. They told him, Awayakunu dalika ya Rasulullah. Is that possible, ya Rasulullah? He told them, Naam wa sharrun min dalik. He said, Even worse than that. He says, Kayfa bikum, Ida raaytum al munkara ma'rufa. Wal ma'ruf munkara. He says, A day will come in which your entire moral system will be upside down. You will see good things as bad and bad things as good, just like we see today. Just exactly like we see today, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. So this is what the Imam says. And then the Imam says, وَرَأَيْتَ الْعُقُوقَ قَدْ ظَهَرْ وَالْوَالِدَيْنِ يُسْتَخَفْ بِهِمَا He says that you will find that there is no longer respect for the parents. Parents are no longer important in people's lives. People disrespect their parents. They do not honor their parents. They do not help their parents. When he is young, as soon as he turns 18, he wants to leave, abandon his parents. And maybe once a month, if the parents are lucky, he will call them and check on them. And once they are old, right away kick them out of the house and send them to the nursery home. This has become the norm in many of the Western countries. There is no respect for the parents. And then the Imam, he says, وَرَأَيْتَ سَفْكَ الدِّمَاءِ يُسْتَخَفُّ بِهَا He says that a time will come, Imam al-Baqir, he says the signs of reappearance. Amongst the signs is that you will see, when people hear of bloodshed, when people are killed, people are indifferent about that. They don't care. Every day you hear people die, and we are, in, we are, what? We are, desensitized. We are desensitized about that. We don't care about that. Hasn't this time happened? Every day, don't we hear people die in the Middle East? People drown in the Mediterranean, trying to reach what? Trying to reach uh, Europe because they want to seek refuge there. Every day people, 50 to 100 people, every day die in Iraq. But humanity has become what? Indifferent to that. Who cares? Yeah, so what? People died in the Middle East. To us, blood no longer is what? Bloodshed is no longer something that we care about. And then the Imam, he goes even one step higher. He says, وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاظِرْ يَتَعَوَّذْ بِاللَّهِ مِمَّا يَرَى فِي الْمُؤْمِنِ مِنَ الْعِبَادَةِ a normal person, a normal moral person, when he sees haram, what does he say? He says, A'udhu Billah. Yes? He seeks refuge in Allah. A time will come in which the opposite will happen. A time will come in which when one sees a believer praying, he will say, A'udhu Billah. We seek refuge in Allah because we see what? People praying and doing ibadah. Do you see how the moral system gradually becomes worse and worse and worse? We, be, we are disturbed because of the ibadah of other people. This is how society becomes. And then the Imam, he says, وَرَأَيْتَ 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 النَّاسِ قَدْ أُثْقِلَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِسْتِمَاعُ الْقُرْآنِ وَخُفَّ عَلَى النَّاسِ إِسْتِمَاعُ الْبَاطِلِ He says one of the signs of the reappearance is that when people hear the Qur'an, it's too difficult for them, it's what, it burdens them. It's just too boring to, to hear someone read the Qur'an, correct? You see, when, when someone reads the Qur'an, nobody's paying attention. It's a boring five, ten minutes. But at the same time, when music is on, no, that's entertaining. Music, they love it. 
But Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes so boring in their eyes. You see the morality, the corruption, the immorality? And then the Imam says, وَرَأَيْتَ الْغِيبَةَ تُسْتَمْلَحْ وَيُبَشِّرُ بِهَا النَّاسِ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا A time will come in which not only people will not in forbid the ghibah, the backbiting, but to stamlah, people will find it so entertaining to do ghibah. We sit in one gathering and what? And we begin to expose other individuals in the community and we begin to backbite. And this is what entertains us. Some people, they tell me that, you know what? If there is a, a sitting, if there is a gathering and there's no ghibah, it's just a boring, it's just a boring gathering. What makes the, se the setting and what makes the gathering fun is the ghibah. We speak about this person and we speak about that person. This is one of the signs of the reappearance. And then the Imam, he goes to the highest level, subhanAllah. Some of it we have witnessed, some of it we will witness. Do not be shocked. The Imam, he says, وَرَأَيْتَ النِّسَاءَ يَتَزَوَّجْنَ بِالنِّسَاءَ He says, you will find same gender marriage. Men marrying men and women marrying women. Now, if we would have read this hadith 100 years ago, we would have said, Allahu Akbar, will this really happen? Just 100 years ago, 50 years ago. But now it has become something normal and we can't even say anything about it. We can't even say that this is immoral, this is wrong, this is something that the human being does not accept because it goes against his moral system, correct? The Imam says, no, one day this will be perfectly normal. They will have their rights and we see this today across the West. And then the Imam, he goes one step higher. He says, Allahu Akbar, a time will come in which what? He says, وَرَأَيْتَ الرَّجُلْ يُعَيَّرْ عَلَىٰ إِتْيَانِ النِّسَاءِ 50 years ago, a homosexual gay man or woman would, was seen in the Western society as a pervert. This person is so immoral. How can he what, want to marry a person from his same gender? It was looked down upon, correct? It was looked as an immoral act just 50 years ago in America and Canada. Such a person was looked as a pervert. Right now it's the norm, it's perfectly fine. The Imam says a time will come in which the opposite will happen. A straight person, a straight person will be seen as a pervert. A time will come, maybe 50 years, have patience. In 100 years, 150 years, in which if people ask me, are you straight? I say it. They look at me as a pervert. Are you serious? You're straight? They will look at this as something disgusting, abnormal. In the same way that 50, 60, 70 years ago, same gender marriage was looked at something very immoral. Such a person, a gay person is what? Is a pervert. Now it's fine. The same thing will happen 50, 100, 200, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. It'll be the other way around. A straight person will be looked as a pervert. And then the Imam says, wait, even one, even one step worse. Look at how humanity gradually begins to lose their moral system. He says, وَرَأَيْتَ ذَوَاتِ الْأَرْحَامِ يُنْكَحْنَا He says that you will find that family, close family members, they will begin to marry one another. What does he mean? He means you will find a time will come in which a mother will marry her son. A father will marry his daughter. A brother will marry his sister. Right now, to you, to us, it's disgusting, even to the Western society, correct? In the same way that homosexuality was disgusting 50 years ago, now I dare you to say anything against them? Wait. Now we see, say, if I marry my mother or a father marries my what? His, his, his daughter, brother, sister married. We see this as disgusting, correct? Gross. But wait 50 years from now. Wait 70 years from now and you will see how this will be even normal and we cannot say anything about it. Why? Because there's no morality. If there is no morality and we human beings, we just want to follow our desires, then khalas, then everything is okay. What's the difference between two men getting married and a mother marrying her son? What's the difference? If they're both okay with it, there's absolutely no difference. The difference, the thing that both share is that they are immoral, correct? But when there is no morality, and when it's a society built on shahwa and desires, and I do what I want, and let religion go to hell, I don't care about Allah, and I have no morals, then everything becomes halal. Just wait. It is proven that the opinions and the morality of society in the West is shaped by whom? It's shaped by the entertainment business. How did they make it in the eyes of the people that, you know, same gender marriage is okay? 
throughout the entertainment, the media, entertainment. They would make movies about people that are married, same sex, same gender. And what? And in the movie, they portray them as normal human beings. There's nothing wrong about them. People watch these movies. They watch these soap operas. Eventually, gradually, they begin to accept this phenomenon. Men and women could marry each other. Man could marry men. Women could wait. Wait in 50, 60 years. All you need what? All you need is help from the entertainment business. And all these things, they will become perfectly normal in the eyes of society. Because there is absolutely no morality. So this is the third group the third type of ahadith that speak about the signs of the reappearance, the loss of morality, corruption will spread across the world. And finally, the fourth type of ahadith, the fourth group of ahadith that speak about the signs of reappearance are the ahadith that speak of certain important figures that will rise before Imam Mahdi. Like whom? There are bad figures, evil figures that will rise before Imam al Mahdi, like as Sufyani. And we'll speak about him in a few minutes. And there are certain good figures that will rise. Like whom? Like for example, Al-Yamani, like Al-Khurasani, like uh, <clears throat> the Nafs al-Zakiya. These are good figures that will rise before Imam al-Mahdi. And for example, the Hadith tells us that Jibra'il, Jibra'il, the angel of Allah, he will make a call in the name of Imam al-Mahdi before the reappearance of the Imam. So this is point number one. This was a brief. This was a brief summary of the types of signs of reappearance. And then we come to the second point. Can bada happen in these signs of reappearance or not? We spoke about bada. We said bada is what? Is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of something and then Allah changes the plan. Allah erases those things that He told us. So can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it possible? Not He can of course. But is it possible that these signs of reappearance, bada' may happen in them and they may never happen? All of a sudden one day we wake up, we see Imam al-Mahdi has appeared without any of these signs truly happening or not. Now, when we come to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, we see the Imams, they tell us that there are two types of signs. There are the signs that are called al-alamat al-mahtumah, the signs that are definite the signs that are unchangeable, that they will happen for sure. And then there's a second type of sign. And that type of sign is called Al-Mawquf, Ghayr Al-Mahtum. These signs, the Imam told us they will happen, but Allah may erase them. They may or may not happen. There's two types of signs. Now, let me give you an example of a sign that many ulama consider this sign is from the changeable signs, from the ones that may or may not happen and how bada did really happen in this sign. We have many ahadith that state that amongst the signs of the reappearance is that the government of Bani al-Abbas will be destroyed. The ahadith tell, tell us if the government of Bani al-Abbas is destroyed, this is one of the signs of the reappearance. And the ahadith tell us who will destroy the government of Bani al-Abbas. We have a few hadith that say al-Sufyani, he will rise and he is the one that will destroy the government of Bani al-Abbas. He will take them down. Now, how many years has passed since the destruction of the government of Bani al-Abbas? Almost 800 years. And Imam al-Mahdi did not appear. And Sufyani did not show up. So wait a minute. The Imams told us amongst the signs of the reappearance is that the government of Bani al-Abbas will be destroyed by, at the hands of Sufyani. That never happened. So many ulama, they believe that what? That this sign was from the alamat ghayr al mahtuma from the changeable signs. The signs that may or may not happen, Allah erased this sign. Now this is one view. There's another view that some ulama hold. They say no, this is from Al-Alamat al mahtuma But however, they believe that Bani Al-Abbas will have two governments. The first government was destroyed. Bani Al-Abbas, the children, the offspring of Al-Abbas, they will come back and they will form a second government at the end of times. And it's that government that the Imams were speaking about. So there is difference in opinion about this point. But the, at the end of the day, there's two types of signs. The first type is the alamat that are definite. The second type, the alamat that may or may not happen. Now, which ones of the signs are the alamat al-mahtuma that will happen for sure? And which ones are the signs that may or may not happen? Before I mention them, please sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.
When we come to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, the Imams clearly tell us, they tell us which, ah, which of the signs are from the definite, from the mahtum, and which are from the mawkuf. They may or may not happen. When we come to the ahadith, the Imams tell us that most of the signs that you read in the ahadith are not from the mahtum. Meaning Allah may erase them. They may, they may never even happen. Most of the signs. And there is only a few signs that are from the mahtum. How many? Some ulama say eight. Some say seven. Some say six. Some say five. But since all, all ulama agree that there are at least five, or most ulama agree that there are at least five signs that are definite and they will not change, we will mention the five unchangeable, definite signs that are from the mahtum. So the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt tell us there are at least five signs that will happen for sure. What are those signs? The first sign from the mahtumat, the signs that will happen for sure, and if this happens, the imam will reappear soon after that. The first sign is the heavenly cry of Jibra'il. Jibra'il, the ahadith tell us, he will make a heavenly cry. A sayha, the ahadith call it. What will he say? He will come down to this earth. The ahadith even mention the day. It will be during the 23rd of Ramadan. So it will be Laylat al-Qadr. And he will make a call that every human being will be able to hear. Every human being. And the hadith says that every human being will hear the call of Jibra'il in his own language. Now some ulama say maybe that's through a miraculous way. Allah will what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will take the... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deliver the voice of Jibra'il to every human being based on his language. Some say no. Some ulama say now that we see technology, we don't need miracles. Jibra'il could use technology through, for example, TV. You can have live TV. Every person in the world could be watching a live event altogether. And you can have someone that's, that's translating that. So it's either through a miracle or it's through technology. The ahadith tell us Jibra'il will make a call. What will he say? He will make a call to everyone in the world that Al-Mahdi from Ahlul Bayt السلام, has finally appeared. So he will make a call in the name of Imam Al-Mahdi. To what? To let people know that Imam Al-Mahdi will reappear very, very soon. And the ahadith tell us that every human being will hear the voice of Jibra'il. And they tell us that when the believers hear that voice, they will be so happy. They will rejoice. Finally, the call for Imam al-Mahdi has come. And the enemies, they will start panicking. The Wahhabis, like for example, the enemies, when they hear the call of al-Mahdi, he is from Ahlul Bayt, they will start panicking and they will hold emergency meetings to see what they can do about that. So this is the first sign of the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi. The first definite sign. The second definite sign, al-alam al mahtuma is al-Sufyani. And by far the most important of the signs of the reappearance is as sufyani Do you know why? Because the most of the ahadith that speak about the reappearance of the imam and the signs of the reappearance, most of them speak about sufyani We don't have ahadith speaking about any other sign as much as we have ahadith speaking about sufyani This shows us sufyani was is a very important event that will happen a few months before Imam al-Mahdi rises. A few months before the Imam comes. We have lots of ahadith. The ahadith tell us everything about Sufyani. You'd be amazed how much information there is in the ahadith about Sufyani. His lineage, his name, who are his parents, and, and uh, exactly where he'll be born, what he'll do, how, he'll, how he will conquer the countries he will. So the ahadith tell us that a Sufyani, he will be a man that will rise in Asham. The countries of Asham, that you have Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, Jordan, in that area. As Sufyani will rise in that area. And the Imams tell us that as Sufyani, he is a vicious, cruel, inhumane man. He is a Nasibi. He hates Ahlul Bayt and he hates the enemies. He hates the followers of Ahlul Bayt. And his main job and goal is to destroy the Shia, to kill the Shia. He will hunt down the Shia anywhere to kill them. The ahadith tell us as Sufyani, why is he called as Sufyani? Because he is from the descendants of Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan, the father of Muawiyah, the grandfather of Yazid, he is his grandfather. And the ahadith also tell us his name. One hadith, Imam Ali, he says the name of as Sufyani will be Uthman. 
His name is Uthman and his father's name is Ambasa. So his name is Uthman ibn Ambasa. Even his name is mentioned in the Ahadith. And the Ahadith tell us that he will rise in the Sham, he will be a leader, and there will be a civil war in Bilad al-Sham, in the countries of al-Sham. He will be the leader of one of the factions in the civil war, and he will prevail against all the other factions. He will rule the countries of Bilad al-Sham, all of them. And then he will what? He will have so many people that will join him, and then he will conquer Iraq, and then he will conquer, he will try to conquer Iran, but he won't be able. So for the main part, he will con conquer Asham and Iraq, Syria, and the country surrounding it, and Iraq. And he's a Nasubi. The Ahadith say that he will hunt down the Shia of Ahlul Bayt. And he will try to kill every person that is a Shia. Now when you hear of as sufyani it kind of reminds you of what's happening right now in the Middle East, doesn't it? It kind of, wait a minute, Sham, Iraq, a Nasubi, there's a civil war over there. His job, his main goal is to kill the Shia in that area. And thus, it relates to what? It relates to ISIS and what they are doing there. Now, can we say for sure that Sufyani is ISIS? This is what I will speak about in the next lecture. Can we apply the signs of the reappearance to current events or not? This is my next lecture, inshallah. Now, I just want to speak about the hadith without applying them. So this is what? This is the second definite sign, as Sufyani. And there's a hadith from Imam al-Sadiq. He says about Sufyani. He says, Inna Inna wa'al Abi Sufyan Ahlu Baytain Ta'adayna Fillah. He says, Us, Ahlul Bayt, Rasulullah and his family, and Abu Sufyan and his family, we are two households that fought against each other. But why did we fight against each other? Did we fight for power, for money? No. He says, We fight over Allah. We fought over Allah. قُلْنَا صَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَقَالُوا كَذِبَ اللَّهُ The Imam summarizes it. We, Ahlul Bayt, we said Allah Sadaq, Allah is truthful. Abu Sufyan and his lineage and his progeny, they said كَذِبَ اللَّهُ Allah is a liar. وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهُ And then the Imam, he says, حَارَبَ وَقَاتَلَ سُفْيَانَ رَسُولَ اللَّهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَعَلَيْهُ Abu Sufyan, he fought against Rasulullah because he, before he supposedly became a Muslim, he was the, one of the leaders of the Mushrikeen. He fought against Rasulullah. وَقَاتَلَ Muawiyah Ali ibn Abi Talib. And then the son of Abu Sufyan, he fought against Imam Ali in the Battle of Safin. وَقَاتَلَ Yazid Al-Imam al Hussein. Yazid, he fought against Imam Hussein and he killed Imam Hussein. And then Imam al-Sadiq says, وَالسُفْيَانِ وَهُوَ مِن نَسْلْ أَبِي سُفْيَان سَوْفَ يُقَاتِلْ أَلْقَائِمْ مِنَّا and Sufyani, who is also from the children and from the progeny of Abu Sufyan, he will fight against Imam al-Mahdi. So you see this family, for thousands of years they've been fighting Ahlul Bayt. Since Rasulullah, till now, they will fight Ahlul Bayt. And this is now, most ulama, they believe that as Sufyani is an individual. And this is what you would understand from most of the hadith, because the Imam even mentions his name. But also, there are some ulama, the minority, they believe that a Sufyani is not an individual, but rather it's a group. A group that represents the ideology of Bani Umayyah and Bani Sufyan. Their ways are the same ways of Bani Sufyan and Bani, uh, Bani Umayyah and uh, Bani, uh, the sons of Abu Sufyan. So there is some disagreement about this. So this is the second sign, the second definite sign that will happen for sure. Al Sufyani will rise before the Imam. The third definite sign before the Imam that will happen for sure is what? Is Al-Khasfu fil bayda The Ahadith tell us that when the Imam, he appears in Mecca, Sufyani, he has a huge army. He hears, word reaches Sufyani that Imam al-Mahdi has appeared, where? He has appeared in Mecca. The troops of a Sufyani, they are in Medina. He sends an army of 12,000 people to go from Medina to Mecca to fight the Imam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intercepts them in the middle of the desert between Mecca and Medina. All of a sudden, the earth swallows those 12,000 people. Just swallows them. Disappear. Only two people remain. What will they do? I'll speak about that in my next, next majlis, inshallah. So this is what? This is the third definite sign. Al-Khasfu fil Bayda, the Imam call it. The fourth definite sign is what? Is the death and the murder of an nafsu zakiya. There will be a Sayyid that will come by the name of Muhammad ibn al Hassan 
the nafs al-zakiya. He is called the nafs al-zakiya, the one that has a pure, innocent soul because he will be killed unjustly. Imam al-Mahdi, before he rises, very shortly before he rises, he will send this man as his messenger to the people of Mecca to tell the people of Mecca to support the Imam. What will happen? He will invite the people of Mecca to join the Imam. When the Imam rises, the people of Mecca, they will arrest him and they will kill him in Masjid al-Haram. The Imams tell us when that happens, when the sacred blood is shed in the sacred Masjid of Allah, Masjid al-Haram, know that Imam al-Mahdi will appear only a few days after that. So this is sign number four. And sign number five from the definite signs is, the Ahadith tell us, Sayyid al-Yamani. Al-Yamani is a noble Sayyid from the descendants lineage of Zayd ibn Imam Zayn al-Abideen. And he will rise in Yemen and he will begin to what? To mobilize supporters to fight for Imam al-Mahdi. So these are the five definite signs that will happen for sure according to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt. And we have many ahadith that speak about this. Now, there's only one problem with the notion of these five signs being definite. What's the problem? We have a hadith that a companion of Imam al-Jawad narrates. Imam al-Jawad had a companion by the name of Abu Hashim al-Ja'fari. Abu Hashim al-Ja'fari, he was a close companion of Imam al-Jawad. He says, one day, I went and I met Imam al-Jawad. And we began to speak about the signs of the reappearance with Imam al-Jawad. We, sp we spoke about Sufyani, we spoke about all the other signs. Excuse me. And then we spoke about how the Imams had said some of the signs are definite, mahtum, some are not mahtum, some are not definite. Allah may erase them. He says, Abu Hashim, then I asked Imam al-Jawad a question. What did he ask? He said, I asked Imam al-Jawad, هَلْ يَبْدُوا لِلَّهِ فِي الْمَحْتُومِ Can bada' happen in the mahtum or no? Remember we said two types of signs, mahtum, no bada' Happens for sure. The non-mahtum, bada' may happen. It may or may not happen. Allah may erase those signs and remove them. So Abu, Abu Hashim al-Ja'bari, he says, I asked Imam al-Jawad, is it possible that bada' can happen in the mahtum as well, the definite? Imam al-Jawad in this hadith, he tells Abu Hashim, yes, bada' can happen even in the mahtum. So Abu Hashim, he says, if bada' can happen even in the mahtum, he asks Imam al-Jawad, he tells him, then I am afraid bada' may happen in the reappearance of the Imam as well. What if Allah all of a sudden, he decides to erase the reappearance of the Imam? Say, you know what? I have changed my plan. Imam al-Mahdi will not reappear. But that may happen in the reappearance of the Imam as well, correct? This is the question he asked Imam al-Jawad. Imam al-Jawad in this hadith, he tells him no. The reappearance of the Imam, but that will not happen in that. Because the Imam calls it, the reappearance of the Imam is from the Mi'ad. It's a promise of Allah. And when Allah makes a promise, He will not break His promise. So this is even at a higher level. This is Mi'ad. It's higher than Mahtum. The reappearance of the Imam will happen for sure. There is no way in which bada will happen in the reappearance of the imam. So this hadith, it shakes our understanding of the mahtum. Because in this hadith, Imam al-Jawad says, bada may happen even in the mahtum. Meaning even the mahtum, those five signs we mentioned, Allah may erase them. And all of a sudden, Imam al-Mahdi will spontaneously appear one day without the five signs. So how do we solve this conflict between these ahadith? There are three views between the ulama. The first view is the view of a Shaykh al-Majlisi rahmatullah alayhi. In the book of Bihar al-Anwar, after he narrates this hadith, he mentions this. He says that bada' will not happen in the mahtum. So the five signs that we mentioned, they will happen. So what does Imam al-Jawad mean when he says bada' will happen? He says, ha, huh, Imam al-Jawad, he means bada' will happen in the details of the five signs. For example, what's the name of Sufyani? How many troops he will have? In which area will he be born? Which countries exactly will he conquer? These details, bada' may happen. Allah may change them. But the initial, the main sign, bada' will not happen yet. Sufyani will come. Yamani will come. 
Nafs al-Zakiyah will rise. And all the other signs they will happen, the Bada' will happen in the details. This is the first view that most ulama have not accepted. Because it appears that Imam al-Jawad in this hadith, he's saying Bada' will happen in the sign itself, not in the details. So that's why most of our ulama have not accepted this interpretation. And then there's a second interpretation. There's a second opinion. The second opinion is the opinion of one of our contemporary ulama by the name of a Sayyid Ja'far Murtadha Al-Amili. He lives in Lebanon and he's a scholar and he has written a book about the signs of reappearance. It's called Ta'amulat or Dirasat Fi Alamat Al-Zuhur. In his book that he wrote about the signs of the reappearance, he says in the book that we can solve the conflict in this way. He says that I believe Bada may happen in the Mahtoum. But wait a minute, if Bada may happen in the Mahtoum, then what's the difference between Mahtoum and non Mahtoum? Because we mentioned, we said non Mahtoum means Bada may happen. If we say Bada can also happen in the Mahtoum, then there's no difference between them, correct? Sayyid Ja'far says, no, I'll tell you what the difference is. He says, when we read the Ahadith, we understand that there's three types of incidents, not two. The first type is the mawquf, that's the non mahtoum What is the mawquf? He says the signs that are mawquf are the ones that the imams didn't tell us they will happen for sure. The imams told us if their requirements are met, they will happen. So the sign has certain requirements. If the requirement will be met, the sign will happen. If the requirement will not be met, the sign will not happen. The Imam didn't tell us if the requirement will or will not be met. For example, if I tell you fire burns, he gives this example. If I tell you fire burns, now, and I take, for example, a piece of clothes that's wet, and I put fire on it and it doesn't burn. Do you come back and you tell me I lied? No, because there are conditions, requirements. In order for fire to burn, that thing that you want to burn has to be dry, correct? So this is a requirement. So the requirements may or may not be what? May or may not be fulfilled. The Imams just told us that these signs may happen if the requirements will be met. Will they or will they, will they not be met? The Imams didn't tell us. This is the mawquf. So 50-50. They may happen, they may not happen. Because the requirements may not necessarily be met. And then we have the mahtoum. Sayyid Ja'far says, the mahtoum according to my understanding is this. The Imams told us that these signs will happen and their requirements will be met. They told us their requirements will be met. So wait a minute, if their requirements will be met, then that means it's, it will happen for sure? Not necessarily, why? The Imams told us it will happen unless Allah, He interferes through a miracle, supernaturally He stops it. So through the laws of nature it should happen. If Allah doesn't interfere, then these signs will happen, but Allah may interfere. Like what? He gives the example of the fire of Ibrahim. When those enemies, they threw Prophet Ibrahim in the fire, why didn't Ibrahim burn? Was there a problem in the fire? No. Was, there, was he wearing a type of shield? No. So why didn't the fire burn him? Because Allah interfered through a miracle, yes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supernaturally interfered. Fire should burn unless Allah orders it to not burn. So it was because of the direct interference of Allah through a miracle that fire didn't burn. He says the mahtoum should happen, just like fire should burn if the requirements are met. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to interfere directly supernaturally and what? Erase those, erase those signs. So he says the mahtoum most likely it will happen unless Allah through a miracle prevents them. And then he says, we have the third type, the mi'ad. The mi'ad is the ones that will happen for sure. And Allah will not interfere. And he says, if we come to most of the signs, they are from the mawquf. They may or may not happen, 50-50. And then we come to the mahtoum, most likely they will happen unless Allah interferes through a miracle and stops them. And then we have the mi'ad. The mi'ad is what? is the reappearance of the Imam. This will happen for sure. Allah will not interfere to stop it. So this is what? The second opinion. And then there is a third opinion. This third opinion holds that there cannot be bada' in the mahtoum. We cannot accept the hadith of Imam al-Jawad. Why? 
Number one, because when we go back to the Senate, the hadith is da'if. One of the narrators is majhul, he's unauthenticated. So we cannot rely on this hadith. This is number one. Number two, this hadith is conflicting many other ahadith that the Imams tell us the mahtum, there will be no bada in the mahtum. If the Imams tell us something is mahtum, definite, bada will not happen in that mahtum. So this hadith of Imam Jawad is conflicting those ahadith which are sahih, some of them. This is number two. Number three, amongst the ahadith that speak about the Sufyani, the Imam says, as Sufyani la buddha min. He says Sufyani must happen. So that means bada cannot happen in what? In the in some of the signs. In another hadith, the Imam says, La qa'ima illa ba'da Sufyani. Imam al Mahdi will never rise until after Sufyani rises. So this is all showing that what? Bada cannot happen in these signs. The Imams are telling us for sure they will happen. And that's why you find, for example, Sayyid al Khu'i, he says, in Al Bayan, in his book Al Bayan, he says that Bada cannot happen in these signs that are mahtum. And it appears that this sign is the most accurate. This third interpretation is the most accurate of the interpretations. That Bada cannot happen in these five signs that signal the reappearance of Imam Al Mahdi. So, this is the second point. We understand that there are signs that are definite that will happen for sure. And there are many signs that may or may not happen and then we move to the third point we said the third point why we have to be extra careful before we apply the signs to the current world event i will speak about that inshallah in my next lecture i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the tawfiq and the honor and the privilege that we can continue in the footsteps of ahlul bayt and we can continue in the footsteps of imam al-mahdi ajallah ta'ala farajahu sharif and I ask him to accept our a'mal, our hajat, our siyam, our qiyam during this blessed month of Ramadan. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ But before I end, there was a request that if we can please recite this verse five times for anyone that is in need, anyone that is sick, and anyone that has a hajah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the reappearance of our 12th Imam. So let us all raise our hands and recite together. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Amman yujibu al-muhtar idha da'a wa yakshifu al-su' أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح أموات الحاضرين والمؤسسين نهدي ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلوات <تصفيق>